Hello, welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector, and Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you? I am good. David, you know, a True Hoop, we like to consider ourselves pretty smart basketball people about the game, of course, because of your big basketball brain and the things that we observe around the game and the business. And sometimes you have these sort of prescient moments where you have this conversation about the league. And then these things happen that all coalesce at the same time. And it's all connected to, well, this is what we're talking about. Um, we were so fortunate, David, to have a conversation with our good friend, Ben Aronson. So Henry, you, Ben and I talked uh, about the NBA and the popularity of the game uh, overall. And Ben's experience uh, working in media as he has for many years uh, and advertising and his just his knowledge of how you know things get sold to fans. Because we're talking about the in-season tournament, right? And we were like, is this, was this a good thing for the league? And the league showed some modest bumps in uh, in viewership, which is always good, right? Trending in the right direction. I, I, I'm not even sure modest is, maybe more than modest. 26, I, I 26%, I so maybe. I don't know, like, you know. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. I mean, modest is like two. <laughs> I think it's, I think 26, who wouldn't want a 26% bump in anything? In anything, that's correct. And, yes. and weren't, weren't the finals, like, Really highly rated? F- finals were very highly rated for sure. Um, yeah. It was it was extremely, extremely well rated. And so we figured, okay, is the league, like, this is good, right? We're moving in the right direction. And so we had Ben on and we we posted the edited transcript of that conversation. By the way, shout out to our editor, Travis Moran, because I'm sure when that call finished, there were 100,000 words in that thing. And he was like, what the hell? I have to cut this out into something legible that people can read. And it really, David, was interesting. So we're talking about, is the NBA popular enough? And you, before we started the show, said, well, we know the answer to that. It isn't, right? Like, our players are, after world football players, uh, you you know, uh, soccer, soccer, they are the most popular and visible athletes worldwide. Is that right? Yes. I didn't know that. They are extremely ubiquitous and well-known. and. As you know, American popular culture, which our athletes are, our NBA athletes are often stars and in, that gets exported all around the globe. And these people know that. And But Ben said something interesting on, the, on, on our call, right? He was like, yeah, players love LeBron and Steph and these guys, but ask them if they actually watch LeBron and Steph I mean, play fans, basketball. Fans like it, yeah. Right. Yeah. Fans the, like those players, but not the game itself. Correct, right? but they don't watch the game. And, well, this is a problem, right? Because this is the NBA is selling this game. So... How do we get them to t- tune in? And I had suggested, well, if they like the players, let's sell more stuff with the players, right? Whatever that may be, hard knocks, what, whatever's going on, sell more things that involve them. If they like LeBron and Steph, great. Give them more LeBron and Steph in whatever capacity we can. I mean, that's, that's, you would think they've already, they would have already done that. Uh, and not just the hard knocks. I liked Arsenal because I watched the, doc, the mm-hmm. Netflix thing on them mm-hmm. from a season ago, I think mm-hmm. it was. F1 racing, which yep. I, I didn't know survive. existed, mm-hmm. is a hugely rated show or mm-hmm. well well uh, uh, watched show. And as someone who has a good relationship with lots of NBA players, they are charismatic and they are fun and interesting and complex. And... Uh, there's no sport. There is no sport where we get an inside glimpse of players the way this we do in this NBA because only five guys on the court per team, mm-hmm. you know, and a locker room is small. What you know, no, no sport has that. F1 racers have a mask on and mm-hmm. driving, you know, in mm-hmm. a car. These guys are in shorts and a tank top, you know, mm-hmm. um, with cameras everywhere. Yep. So uh, I think you're. I didn't. We didn't even talk about this on the show much, but you're exactly right. Uh, there's just a, you're dying for that. Yeah, we're, di- we're dying for that. There's an intimacy fans yeah, believe right. they have with NBA players because, of, as you just mentioned, all the, the way the game is presented, right? Man. Close c- qu- quarters. I see their faces. They're right up close to me. And these guys are ubiquitous all over social media and, like, constantly doing things. Like, this is – so, anyway, we were talking about that, and it's just so funny that it, it turns out that we had quite the last few eventful days in the NBA with all sorts of things going on that are really connected to this whole thing, right? It's not actual play, right? It's like, well, this, all these things are leading the conversation right now. Um, we'll first start with Draymond Green and the uh, Golden State Warriors. So Draymond... Well, well, hold on, Gerard. Yeah. I want to credit you for something because you, you, you left one part out. It, just to finish the point of you just, what you just said, um, you, you've been one of the guys championing lesser games, mm, sure. your games. Well, one of the byproducts of lesser games is the game. You've said this. 
Uh, as is Henry, the games are more important. Each game is more important. It, when eight, with 82, it's easy to get caught up on Draymond's swing mm-hmm. that you're about to talk about mm-hmm. because it was just another game on a Wednesday night or Tuesday mm-hmm. night, you mm-hmm. know? If, if In the NFL, the games still carry the day in part because there's so few of them. Mm-hmm. So now we can get into this other stuff, which will be less important probably and less visible if the game was the more important thing. Correct. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. You're fine. And, that's, and uh, thank you for saying that. Scarcity, yeah. right? Like that's yeah, right. what that's huge for the NFL and other sports, you know, whereas, you know, we have, don't have a scarcity problem in the NBA. We have too many games, right? <laughs> sure. Way too many. <laughs> All right. So Draymond um, in a game Tuesday night against the Phoenix Suns, a game the Warriors lost. Um, there was a, you know, this happens in the NBA all the time, David. You know, guys pushing, shoving, trying to like get a hold of each other. It's just, it's a way more game. physical than anyone realizes. Yeah. Well, right. But listen to an old head telling, oh, these guys are soft. Nobody plays physical. I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? Do you watch these games? Yeah. They no. Look, they look pretty yeah, physical no. to me. <laughs> yeah. That's a rhetorical question. No. <laughs> and so Draymond, in what he described as an act of selling the call, flung his arms and they connected and he struck Yusef Nurkic in the face. Got knocked down. Any strike to the face is immediately uh, goes to the monitor to review for flagrant. I mean, I, I mean, it didn't take long. It should have taken even less time than it did. The minute you just saw it, you knew he was gone. Okay. It came down yesterday that Draymond will be suspended indefinitely by the NBA. And I want to start here, David. I don't look. They're going to talk about ways in which Draymond can get help. And Nurkic said, well, I hope he gets the help he needs. Everybody's using that. And you and I are not psychologists, and I don't want to go down that road of what kind of help he may or may not need. What we can talk about, though, is that Draymond has a history of behavior on the court that is detrimental to his team, right? We can go all the way back to the 2016 playoffs, right? So everybody remembers the, the nut punch that got him suspended for LeBron James. But why did that happen? Because in the round before against the Oklahoma City Thunder, he kicked Steven Adams in the growing and got a flagrant foul penalty, right? And the numbers were already there. He gets tossed. Many people argue that's why the Warriors lost 2016 finals. We saw last year, well, before that, uh, we saw him physically berate and have to be restrained going after Kevin Durant when Durant was on the Warriors after a game, right? Getting very volatile, that whole scenario. Last year, we saw him step on the chest of DeMontis Sabonis in the postseason. You know, he punched Jordan Poole in the face. Everybody saw that video. These things, there is a history, right, of behavior that is just not helpful for his team because it either causes him to be suspended or time away from the group for, (laughs) sounds like a kid, but bad behavior, right? And so here we are again, and the league has now said indefinite suspension. Rich Paul, his agent, Mike Dunleavy, and Draymond are going to meet. I don't know if Adam Silver is involved in that or not. Uh, to discuss sort of a plan going forward. So first, when you saw Draymond do what he did on Tuesday, what did you think and where do you stand on Draymond's repeated behavior? So I actually saw it in reverse. I first saw his comments the ne- next morning, in a, like at five in the morning in, a, in the press conference, in the post-game press conference. And he sounded so reasonable and rational and contrite. Like he, he, he did not mean to do any of it. And I believed him. I, I don't know why I believed him, but I believed him. That, oh, it just probably was just bad luck, and he may have been tagged because he's Draymond Green. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the play in full speed. I didn't need to see a replay. I did, but I didn't need to see it. Like, I, I, I do watch a little basketball here in, in the Thorpe house, in mm-hmm. my Thorpe office. Um, that is not a basketball play. Not that he said it wasn't. I remember what he said. That was a, a out of control. He was wild selling speed. a call is what he said. Yeah. That, oh, is that right? Yes, oh, because Nurkish was grabbing his hip. So he was yeah, that, throwing um, his arms to sell. I, I, I think he's not telling the truth. He may in his own mind believe that, but we saw what we saw. Uh, it is alarming. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with him. I have, I have a degree in psychology. It does not make me a psychologist. I do have three decades of experience working with players and two plus decades now with NBA players. And um, I, I don't know where to begin or that he, he needs to talk to someone more experienced than me um, because you just can't be doing that stuff. And, uh, you know, they talk about this. It's a fine line between really playing with edge and then going above it. I don't think it's so fine. Uh, most of our players play really hard uh, most of the time, and they don't do that stuff, you know. Uh, it's disheartening for another reason, which is, it's dragging Steph down, and that's a miserable thing. It's, it'd be like 
someone ruining Kobe's last three mm. or four mm. peak years. Uh, we can't, we can't let that. Happen. We, as a collective, the Warriors as a team, they can't let this happen anymore. Um, and of course, uh, no, you're, you're, I love where you're going there. We're going to move to that in a minute. I did not mention, my apologies, the rear naked chokehold he put on Rudy Gobert earlier this season as well. Right. That, that got him yeah. suspended. Yeah, and you, and you mentioned the punch to, to Jordan Poole, mm -hmm. like as if that was just, you know, no big deal. I, don't, I know you don't feel right, that way. Right, right. These are, these are really, these are things that do not belong. For, if three different guys did it, we'd be upset with all three. The mm -hmm. same guy, mm -hmm. three times? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why he was suspended indefinitely now. And, uh, and, and, and forget about where we're going to go next regarding the article mm -hmm. we just published. Mm -hmm. But just the idea of, like, what does this mean for the Warriors? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty obvious sign, in my opinion. Oh, w without question. And, you know, the, in the history of the NBA, and you've been watching the NBA a long time, David, um, I always say my first memories, of course, is the 85 NBA Finals, right? Like that's... Mine was the 73, 72 <laughs> Lakers. Yeah, I was 70 years We have old. a slight age difference, not a yeah. big one, just a slight one. Yeah. Um, when dynasties end, David, this is kind of how it often looks when it ends. Um, it may not be a player, you know, choking somebody and, and you know, uh, punching someone or whatever, but... It, it just looks like things are fraying around everywhere, right? Players, what they used to be really excellent at and what was tolerated is now problematic. And it causes the team angst uh, more so because they're losing and can't cover it up with the wins, right? Because you can't stay on top in this league forever. It's too hard, right? There's too many good, awesome people. And, you know, one of the things we do, David, and we've done on this show when people do is laud the Warriors culture about how great it is. But David, I have to push back on that and now and say, but your culture allowed this to fester and continue. It isn't like one day he decided, I'm going to start acting like this. We just, we just laid out his history. He's always behaved like this. But when you're winning, cool, no problem, right? So what's the, a, a coach famously said, I don't know who gets credit for it. Win is like the great disinfectant or perfume, right? It covers up all that ails. Yeah, but when you ain't, when you ain't winning, oh, it stinks in here now, right? Now you're yeah. like, is that an NBA coach? <laughs> Don't know. Some sounds some like, sounds like someone smart like Bill Parcells. Yeah, some some sports yeah, coach smart. said that, right? Yeah. Like it's just yeah. it you're not winning now and you are hurting the team, you're hurting Steph. And David Steph as the leader, you know, we, we talked about this when Kyrie and, and Katie and Harden were in Brooklyn, right? And it was like, Well, why can't Katie get Harden to just I mean get Kyrie to just take the vaccine and because Kyrie's his own man, does whatever he wants, right? Like I can't make some guy do something, right? It's the same with Steph, right? He can't make Draymond behave better, right? Can he? I don't know. Like, no. where is this on, on, on the leadership standpoint? So, again, my point is just culture-wise, when we talk about the Warriors, like, culture is always great when you're winning. When you're losing, it's like, okay, well, how great was that culture to begin with? Because, again, you gave him the rope to be who he is. He plays on and over that edge all the time. I, I joke from the, from the um, Dave Chappelle skit, that uh, with Charlie Murphy, that Draymond is a habitual line stepper, like because he is. But again, when you're so excellent, we allow it. And the line on the floor is so we can't even see how excellent you are. David, I know you've talked to many like management consultant people and various people throughout your life and stuff that you've done in the past. If you look at like a, a, a management quadrant, right? And you put performance uh, or you put managing uh, behavior on an X axis and performance on the Y axis, right? Draymond is your typical quadrant two player, right? High performance, really difficult to manage. And yeah. that is problematic as the performance starts dipping, but the difficulty to manage remains high. And this is where we are right now. And one of the really surprising things is, is he already shooting from three this year? Oh, career high, 44, something like that? Yeah, 44, 45%. Yeah. Um, it's not his fault that Wiggins is just terrible. Terrible. He is and, absolutely cratered. And Clay's not Clay good this Thompson's year. Clay Thompson's at 34%, yeah. which is a career low for him by a pretty good margin. Um, they have, you know, young players that are, are just doing okay. Um, all of this to me is that I, I, I do believe in the, in the, uh, the saying culture eats strategy for breakfast. I really like that. However, um, culture isn't something that's permanent. It has to be fed all the time. And uh, it's rotten right now. It's just rotten. For, I didn't see the video. We have it of Steph's reaction. It's in the article mm -hmm. that we have, we're published now. 
Um, I didn't even look at it yet. I, I was, it was described to me and that was enough, but it's a mess. And I'm already hearing rumors of where Kerr is going to be next as a coach. Mm. They're not going to pay him, but they're going to pay him. Uh, it's, uh, to me, it's fair to guess. And I, I, you know, I've been watching enough games over the years to, to not remember how dynasties normally end. Uh, uh, you're not wrong. And other people are writing this too. But, but also we're talking about, they just ended in more losses than what they were used to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Miami got rid of their guys. Mm -hmm. The Spurs in a sense got rid of their guys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Golden State is losing. So what's next? Yeah. Guys, guys got to move. Yeah. The Exodus. Yeah. Uh, it's not so easy to get well, rid of Draymond and yes. um, Wiggins Clay. and Clay. And Wiggins for right. sure. Yeah. Clay's at least an expiring, but why would someone else take them? Golden State's going to expire. Um, it's not like he can really help another team the way he's playing. So, yeah. where does that take us? Well, it takes us to Steph, to Steph Curry. And David has an article that came out today, um, and it's titled, is, the War is it time for the Warriors to trade Steph Curry? Or something of that nature, basically. Yeah. And I said, I joked in our chat, oh, Warriors fans going to be really angry today when they see that headline. Because, David, you rightfully said, um, in the summer, should the Bucks consider trading Giannis now? They didn't. They decided to add Damon. And they're fine. Like, they're, they're a good team. They're doing well. They're good. They're but ten. if they don't win the title this year or next year, that Dame contract's going to look terrible because he's no longer going to be as effective as he is. And Giannis is still going to be very good. And it's going to be, well, now how do we get rid of this guy who still has however much money left on his contract? And you're, you're, you're in purgatory here. And the, and the Warriors, highest um, sal uh, salary cap in the league, or I'm sorry, uh, team payroll, right. 400 million for a team that right now, they're, they're not winning anything right now. Like if the playoffs started today, they are out of the plan right. as of today. Yeah. Correct. Right. And, and I think you and I came down. And I think it was either you or Henry said that Tom's done a Tom Travers show for another show has done enough strategy that based uh, research that says after twenty six games, the standings yeah. typically don't change all Henry that. Henry said that, but I read an article about that too. Yeah. And so we're almost at twenty six games. We're yeah. right right about there, twenty four. And so I'm not saying, you know, the Warriors won't make the play in, but what do we do? Okay. So Steph Curry. Because the point is as we just mentioned, you can't trade Wiggins. I mean, I'm saying you can't. It'll be difficult it's to trade very Wiggins. very unlikely to trade right. a guy playing that bad. Correct. The number of years and money he's got left. Wiggins and Draymond are going to be difficult to move for the reasons that we just outlined. Clay is expiring, so why would the Warriors want to do that? And also, who's going to want to take on $48 million at the rate that he's playing right now? Right. So that means who's only left? Steph. Oh, which first you have to sell that to your fans. Your, 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 everybody's got to be on board with this. And he wants to go to a winner. The other challenge with that, David, is, and I don't want to ruin the teams you suggest, so we can talk broadly around. I want people to read the article. For anybody to acquire Steph, well, most teams would have to give up all the good stuff they have to get him, which then makes them not good enough to compete for a championship. So we're left with what now? But there are a few teams, David, who can make that move. Uh, obviously, teams with young players and teams with a ton of draft capital. So let's at least go with one. Let's talk about OKC and what they could do to get Steph. Well, let's, let me go back a little bit. Um, this would not be the Warriors' decision yes. to to trade him. Correct. Uh, I, I mean, if it was, they'd be they'd be screamed at by their fan base. Correct. My argument was, uh, Steph is basketball royalty, mm -hmm. and you can argue with anything I say here. To me, he is. You know, I, I started thinking about the names of players, and I'm sure I missed some who just had perfect resumes, from Bill Russell and Hondo. To Dr. J mm -hmm. and Bird, not Magic, right. my favorite, Bird, right? Tim Duncan, like go, go through, Black Kobe, he mm -hmm. had his issues. Guys have just been perfect. He, to me, LeBron has mm -hmm. been perfect. Mm -hmm. his, his biggest mistake was a TV show for 20 minutes. Like, okay, I'm sorry, right. I don't hold that against him. Correct. Um, and, and he's still playing out of his mind. Uh, Curry's in that group. Jerry West, mm -hmm. Curry's in that group. Dr. J, mm -hmm. the... the these guys have, if they wanted to leave West, Dr. J, whatever, Duncan, and said to their bosses, I just, there's no future here. I, I don't want to end up like Kobe and losing 60, 50 to 60 games a season in my last few years. And Curry's better now than Kobe Correct. was the last few years. Way better. Because he's just way better shooter. Mm -hmm. um, so if Curry says to, to Joe Lacob, uh, I, I, want to, I want to go somewhere else. It's over here. That, with, with Draymond being how he's how he is, like you said, I, I can't control him. I can't. I, apparently, whatever I've done isn't working. Mm -hmm. Clay is Clay. You know, God bless him. Has had all these issues. 
uh, injury wise. He's amazing. I love him with brothers for life. Andrew can't find himself. I heard someone tell me yesterday, a knowledgeable person with the Warriors told me there's more issues with his dad. We know that's happened mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. And remember, too, I picked them to win the West regular season. Yep. I thought Wiggins, who looked really good last year, would have a, a bounce back season. I thought Draymond, fresh off his, mm-hmm. his new deal, would play well. And he has, mm-hmm. especially as a shooter. I really thought that they would roll Moody better, Kaminga better. I loved the Saric addition. Yep, got Chris Looney Paul. Played, mm-hmm. Looney played Chris Paul, of course, as a fourth quarter guy. Looney, uh, 82 games straight the last two years and a quality player. I just thought they would put it together for one last go around. Obviously, that was a gigantic mistake, mostly because of Wiggins. I think they needed him and Clay. Those two mm-hmm. guys have just been bad, if not terrible. So if Steph goes in and says that, who are the Warriors to say, no, you make, you make too much money for us? Correct. I, I think if, if Steph is willing, and remember, uh, Dame wasn't willing for years to really push. Mm-hmm. And he finally did and got moved. And he's on a good team. Not a contender. I mean, not a great team, a contender, mm-hmm. but a secondary contender, I would argue. Their, their starting five is half of the plus minus that Boston's starting five has. <laughs> Boston's and so I really, good. remember, benches matter. Mm-hmm. Benches matter. So if Steph were to sit down, and talk about where he'd want to go. I, I, none of us would think OKC would be his first choice. No. That doesn't mean we're right. Correct. We, we have no idea. I mean, I, I mentioned the article. His wife's from Toronto. Mm-hmm. His, dad, his dad played for the Raptors, mm-hmm. right? There, there, there's, uh, he, his family's from Charlotte. There's NBA franchises in those cities. There are. Kawhi went home. Uh, LeBron went home. So we don't know. And I'm not trying to pretend to know what Steph would think. We can just try to read the tea leaves as best we can. So I don't want to get into OKC because that's the obvious one. I'll throw out one team only. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and where does everyone always say they want to go? And we understand why. <laughs> well, Miami because right. the weather, the taxes. Weather, yeah. Taxes. Mm-hmm. And the heater. Two, really two good. Cha- <laughs> right. Two championships. <laughs> two championship losses. Yeah. And a third game seven mm-hmm. in the last three years mm-hmm. in the Eastern Conference Finals with the same core guys, basically. So if you can replace Kyle, so this Heat team is pretty good. Not great, pretty good. Not as good as Milwaukee, but good enough where Eric, I talked to an insider from the Heat the other day. Uh, I said, Eric strikes me, Coach Poe strikes me as someone who knows, oh, I've got the pieces I need just now. Like we, we made it into the finals last year with a nine seed, I think. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, playing yeah. Team, they, they were playing. They were playing team. And they lost the first playing game, mm-hmm. actually, yeah. So with what I got now, because I got more players and I got because Jaime Hackett is a pretty good rookie, not great, pretty good. Like we're gonna be we're gonna be just fine. He strikes me as that. So now I bring Steph Curry to that and just lose some young guys mm-hmm. and Kyle some Lowry mm-hmm. and some picks. And again, it's not equitable for the Warriors, as I wrote. Not equitable. Right. There's no no Nothing. deal. No no. There's no one. But how do you say to Steph? Not enough. It's mm-hmm. Steph. Mm-hmm. I don't think you can say it. Mm. I think Steph has, this is just a guess. I think he has enough power and leverage to be able to say, this is where I want to be. And Miami's got to give you everything that you want. That doesn't mean we suck when I get there. And the words, I think, have to take it. And it's just, it's just a guess on my part. So there's a few teams I come up with where the Warriors would be better off than Miami, a Miami deal. Maybe about the same. OKC is just, Obviously, you're not trying to win championships if you're the Warriors and you do an OKC deal, but we, we can play with the idea of Curry, Ch- uh, Chet, and Shea as the core. That will be the core, and, and I'll finish off with this on OKC. Chet's never been in a playoff game before. Correct. Shea's never been the man on a playoff team. It's fair to guess that they wouldn't win a championship this year. There's a lot to learn. You have to go, we think, you and I both, mm-hmm. Milwaukee had to go through pain. You have to go through pain to get there, typically. Um, but there's a three year window where those guys are still ascending, where we think they can have a real shot at that at one of those three years, if not two, if not even, if not three. So, okay. See Miami, there's some others. The bigger thing is, is Steph has Steph had enough. It's not about the Warriors saying, right. Uh, uh we need to trade you. I don't think that'll ever happen. It no, means too much money to their bottom line. I agree. The chase center. And then you have to worry about, okay, what do the Warriors want? Because ideally, it's Steph gives me some ideas. We give him some ideas. You do the Venn diagram and then you work from there. 
we like these teams. You like these teams. Let's see what the best offer is. You have to say okay, and then we have to say okay. That would be a, a fair thing to consider. Because Steph, it seems like he's not a, he's not a jerk. Right now, he, no. he might say, I like Miami a little bit more, but if you really like this OKC deal better, I, I like the fact that I can win a lot there. I'm not worried. And tell me if you disagree. I was talking to my editor, to editor Travis, about it. I, his brand now doesn't matter about Knicks, which is, I don't think a deal is good over Brooklyn. No. Like, just win. Yeah, it doesn't matter where he goes. At this point, yeah. just keep winning. Yeah. Right? He's got four mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rings, five. And how many final appearances? Seven? Seven. No, yeah. no, no. Six. Seven. Lost to the Cavs. Yep. Lost, lost to, to the, the Raptors. Raptors. Yeah. Six. Oh, six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty, pretty elite. So get there another couple of times, super elite. And um, don't worry about the city you're in. You're oh, allowed yeah. to worry about it wherever you want. I'm just saying you don't need it from a legacy standpoint. So I think, I think I agree with you. I think for him, the question is, well, there's a couple of things, right? Like what, because that means uprooting the family, right? So and he has several kids, right? So what does Aisha and the kids want? And where do we want them to be sure. in school and all that, yeah. right? That's a, that's a huge factor. They have a pretty, I mean, they'll have a pretty good life wherever they go because he's super rich, but they're firmly entrenched in, uh, in, in, in the Bay Area. So that'll, that'll be something. Uh, the second thing that the relationship you're talking about is assuming that Lacob and Steph can have the kind of conversation and the trust that we're going to do what's right by you. I don't know, right? Like, because Laker could be like, "Screw that!" Like, I, for sure, we have. I have no idea what this guy is like. Like, you know, and it would. By and the way, it, that's a risky play if you piss Steph off. Sure, if Steph says to Warrior Nation, "I've given you everything I've got. You've had the greatest run for sports in the history." Well, the Niners are right there, mm -hmm, I guess. Mm -hmm, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So we, I gave you another run like that, mm -hmm. and I just don't want to finish like this. So, and we, I write about this, Steve Kerr's money mm -hmm. comes off. You can pay Kenny Atkinson a whole lot less money. You have to pay Steve sure coming can. forward. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you guys a chance for a future, and this motherfucker won't trade me. Like, how's that going to go? And that's and, what I would do if I was Steph. And that way. would require Steph to do something he hasn't really done, right? Steph is not the guy to go out and publicly say, here's what's happening, this is what's yeah. going on, right? And throw his weight around like that. We, that's just not who he's been as an NBA superstar. So it would be, from what we know, a diversion in, in behavior for him, right? Which, interesting. It'll be interesting to see if he wants to do that. I think your point about um, where to go makes so much sense because Steph at 35 is still elite, right? All NBA level, MVP level. And you said, OKC is not ready to win now because Shea has not been the man yet and Chet's a rookie. The but team I, is very good right. regular season, right? But to your point, Attaching at your age, Steph's age, to stars who are ascending is the best yeah. bet, right? Even though so. in your mind you're thinking, no, but I don't know, Jimmy is a known commodity. It's like, yes, he is, but Jimmy's north of 30 already, right? Like, it's, it's a tough balance, right? Like, win now versus, okay, or a chance to win now versus, yeah, but over the next three years, and, and we agree Steph's game should age pretty well because of the shooting, I'll give myself more cracks with this younger team, possibly, right? So these are the things you got to weigh. But then it's Oklahoma City. Do I want to live there? And, does, and to your point, does the family want to live right. there? There, yeah. There's there's a way to, to include his wife on the Venn diagram. Oh, for, for where sure. Steph wants to be where the what the Warriors want. You know, we we talk on the article that we wrote about the article about are they looking to keep asses in seats? Mm -hmm. Do they just you know if there's some good players out there you can get to to keep the team and if they have some players still on the team, Moody, mm -hmm. Kaminga, they can ship all those guys out and really start over again and no one will come potentially mm -hmm. or there's also a bet that you know what we've built some trust with our community that we know what we're doing and it lasted a long time we won in 2015 i think and it's 20 maybe 2016 mm -hmm. 2023 now mm -hmm. um that's a good long run for any professional sports team maybe they'll keep coming because they want to be part of the next group that there's a risk uh, or they can think you know what I, let's we lose curry uh, maybe this year is a lost cause, but we're going to get some good players in. We're going to make some of these other trades, not start over and be competitive, see what happens. It's like they've got some options to try it because they still got to pay Wiggins and if they can't trade Draymond. Mm -hmm. Draymond. Yeah. And Chris Paul. Yeah. Still got to pay those guys. Yeah. Although I think they could probably move Chris again. Yeah. It's, uh, look, the, the, this, is, this is the conundrum uh, because the way the NBA's salary cap and structure works is that 
as players get older, they get paid more and more money, right? Yeah. And you end up paying on the back end as an organization for all of your early championship success. This is what the, they're pay, paying the bill. The bills come doing all that now. And if the players are not playing at the level, which we did besides Steph, nobody is. This is what you get now. It will be interesting. I wanted to talk to you, David, from a coach perspective um, on how you handle dealing with a player and their adjusting skill set because of age and you know how you get them to understand well this is who you are now like, this is the role and i'm talking about clay specifically because here's a guy who pre the two injuries right arguably people always say oh the best two-way guard in the league right then with like great on offense great on defense all that he's no longer that guy right um and he's not shooting it well, I'm not saying he, that he couldn't have a, have a hot streak. 34% right now, yeah. Um, but he certainly isn't the guy who's an all-star and who could potentially be all-NBA third team. No Right? Chance. So is he now more better coming off the bench, right? And you put Moody in the starting lineup or, or whomever. And how do you get a guy who's accomplished so much for you and done so much to understand the realities of, okay, but you're not that person anymore without killing his confidence? It ain't easy, although I think the pl- the right player makes it easier. A Clay strikes me as someone that knows what's going on. Uh, you want him to have belief that he can turn it around, but you can turn it around in the second against second units too, right? Let's let's try. I mean, to me, it always is everything needs to be cloaked or contexted with winning. What we're doing now isn't winning. We're ten and thirteen. The year they won the championships years ago, I wrote about it. were they twenty five and four. Mm-hmm. They were. Excellent. At this, out the game. At December 15, mm-hmm. 25 and 4. So it's tomorrow. Um, I would cloak it in that. Like, we've got to do some d- different things. If you're going to keep Steph, you're not going to keep Steph. It's the same conversation. We're trying to win, and it's not working out this way. We have to try some things. I believe the last game, uh, Kerr took Loon mm-hmm. and Clay out and left Moody and Kaminga. Mm-hmm. Loon, Clay, and Wiggins out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go. We're trying to win games. Yeah. But this is also a sign, too, of, of you know, the, the dynasty ended when they won uh, against Boston in amazing fashion. Yeah. And it's just, you know, I think it's tough, right? Because you hear the, you hear the, the, the rhetoric from the guys, right? Like, you know, I want to go to war with these four guys no matter what. Because, and it's because of all of the history. And it makes sense. But yeah. it doesn't last forever, right? It ends. Like, you cannot keep this up. And this is, this is where we are. So it'll be interesting, again, to see what what they do again i agree with you the warriors will not do it uh do a step trade of their own volition he will have to be the one to initiate yeah. it yeah. and my guess is i doubt he does that, that that's swirly and i so highly doubt I, he does that. I, I would yeah of, i have no idea i would tell him uh don't be like dane be like james dane wanted to be in miami but kind of kept it quiet and denied that he really wanted to go anywhere mm-hmm. until very late in the game and he's in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. James Harden loudly, vociferously said, I want to be in L.A. And he's in L.A. Oh, and they've won five straight. Yeah, they have turned it around a bit. Yeah, they've won five straight. <laughs> so, um, Steph, you've earned the privilege of being like James. And just tell them where you want to go. Tell us, I want to be there. And, make, and they'll make it happen, I no, think. I, I think you're right. He may, they may not do it, but they, they, he may not do it. But if he does, they will. For sure. All right, guys, we'll be back after this brief commercial break. Okay, David. Oh, boy. Last night's Milwaukee Bucks-Indiana Pacers game. My goodness. First, I'm going to say this. Um, the in-season tournament um, may be the catalyst for a rivalry coming back to the NBA that, you know, a lot of the old heads say they miss. There's no rivalries anymore in, 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 in the league. Uh, the Pacers and Bucks before last night's game had played twice. Once in the in-season tournament and once uh, outside of the in-season tournament. The Pacers won both those games. In the second game, in the in-season tournament semifinals, uh, the Pacers went on that incredible second half run and just took it to the Bucs. And, you know, you work with NBA players all the time. Like, I, the, the Bucs felt some kind of way about that, about the Pacers taking it to them and putting it on them. These guys are competitive. They're all macho, all the things. You know, we heard what Dame said. Oh, you know, be humble. When it, and I'm always like, look, Dame, like, you're not humble when you're doing Dame time. So, like, what, like it is what it is. Like, fine. That, that famous uh, meme of his face. Right. With the, one of the greatest memes of all time. 
Like there was nothing humble. I have no problem with it. There's nothing humble about that face. It was Correct. like motherfuckers on the man. Exactly. So <laughs> it, awesome. it happens, right? It was awesome. you're, you're going to humble people, you're going to get yeah. humble. That's just yeah. how the nature of this yeah. sport Stay is. Stay humble, be humble. That's what I always say. Yeah. So this game, the Bucks had some they had some verb and some juice to them. They were like, even though it's a regular season outside of the tournament, now nah, this team beat us twice, we ain't letting them beat us a third time. Right. So they came with the thunder. Giannis well, well, spe- Giannis did anyway. specifically. 64 points, a career high for Giannis and a franchise record. What a, I mean, first of all, the franchise record, that's a franchise by the way that had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Lou Alcindor then on their team. And he and, is the- <laughs> and Oscar Robertson. And, and Oscar Robertson and he has the scoring record. But yeah. so pretty pretty incredible. Marcus Johnson was a good player for them. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Andridge was one of our famous favorite he, players growing up. Giannis yeah. went to the free throw line 32 times in that game last 32. night. 32. I watched, listen, I watched every free, every foul yeah. that he took. Tell me. All, all legit calls. No. Oh, okay. But most, yeah. I mean, oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it was illegitimate. Okay. There was some, you know, there was some, I'm just going to run this cat over because I'm going to get the call. Like, you know how mm-hmm. that is happening now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were some ticky tack fouls, I thought, and most of them were absolute fouls. <laughs> yeah. But listen, he just kept coming yeah. and just kept coming and kept coming yeah. and kept coming. He didn't stop. And I think six or eight of them came at the end of the game. The game was over. Yes. They left him in. And well, they, Sheriff, they, they put him back in because Indiana yeah, had their bench the guys in and the lead sort of cutting down. Yeah, and then Giannis went weird. back in the game. Yeah. And Jairus Wallace, Jairus Walker? Walker. Jairus Walker, Walker from Houston, uh, the Cougars. Uh, had never seen Giannis before. So he was just like, <laughs> grab, wrestling, grab. Yeah. And then Ben Shepard fouled him for some reason. Uh, these were rookies. Yeah. So that helped. But still, most of those were well earned. Not all, but most. And this game was chippy, uh, for, as I mentioned, from the beginning. Uh, Giannis gave Tyrese a little elbow shot, knocked him to the ground. Uh, Aaron Neesmith fouled um, Giannis very hard, and Bobby Portis had the Bobby Portis eyes when he came over. He got tossed. It was <laughs> listen. It was just all the commotion, and oh my god, guys, really like it. And this is see, so this is how you know people don't watch NBA games. This is how you know those guys care. They're not doing that if they don't give a shit. If they're like ah whatever, like that's why they're all acting the way they're acting. They they care and they're super competitive about it. All right, so the game's over, and. There's a whole kerfuffle, David, about who gets the game ball because Giannis wants it because he had his career high and the franchise record. And the Pacers after the game said, well, but there was a rookie on our team who scored his first basket. And we do this every year. And I checked and verified they do do it for all their rookies. The Pacers like do a thing on the ball, like congrats on your first point, whatever. And Giannis does do a thing where after big games, he gets the ball and he gives it to his mom and he writes it. All that is true. Yeah. But David, it was all much ado about nothing because. The Pacers, like, we don't care which ball it is. We just want a game ball from the game, which, aha, we want a game ball. There are two game balls in the game, people. And by the way, at the end of the game, the Bucks' assistant security director, as the bustle, the final was uh, buzzer sounds. Literally as it happens. He goes straight to the referee, and the referee hands him the game ball. So uh, the Bucks had the game ball, and the Pacers had a game ball. Everybody should be happy, hunky-dory, no problem. Giannis. Beelines into the towards the Indiana Pacers locker room, screaming. Everyone's gonna hold him back. I'm like, oh my god, guys, this is like WWE right now. It's like wrestling. He doesn't get the locker room. He comes back out. He gets into Halliburton's face. Lloyd face. Get me the effing ball. Like everybody going crazy. I'm like, what this? What is happening right now? And all I can say is, this is all has to do with what happened in the in season tournament and before. Like they felt a kind of way about getting beat. And the Pacers showing them up, and they're like, and this is Giannis, all of Giannis's frustration coming out in that moment. But ultimately, everybody got their ball. I don't know if you saw the end. Giannis, they already had the ball. Right. Giannis yeah. said, oh, I have a ball. I don't know if it's the game ball. I'm like, bro, like, you have a game ball. You do. Yeah. It is we a game ball. We saw it on video. The referee <laughs> had a ball on the court. That's a game ball. It, it was just, David, it's just too funny to me. And like, all of this hemming and hawing, and I'm like, oh my god, you guys, it's really, it's a ball, guys. Really, are we really gonna like get enraged over that? Yes. So you've got a couple of things going on. Uh, uh, these are men mostly in their mid to late twenties, which I'm happy to tell you now is very young. It's very. I I, I think Giannis is was he 29? 29. Yeah. Half my age. So <laughs> um, uh, not to say I did those kind of things at 29, but I'm sure he did plenty of other things much worse. 
And so you've got the emotion of the game. You've got the the rivalry part that you're talking about. The fact that Giannis got fouled. I mean, he did get fouled that many times. That's got to take a beating. The Pacers feel bruised mm-hmm. that they were whistled for all those fouls. And so it was a perfect storm. This is a, a failure of security more than anything. Like you can't allow players to come in the locker room that way. Right. Yeah. There's a better way to handle it than, than how they did it. We'll learn from it. You know, it's, you, you'd think, you'd think we'd stop having um, uh, uh, court cases that set precedents. It's like, everything's already happened before. No, no, there's always still new stuff <laughs> happening. Uh, there is a new rule now, NBA guys get pissed off. The new policy issue guys get pissed off the game ball. So let's make sure we have security for that too. Yeah. 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 I did find, though, David, and I've watched those videos multiple times, Giannis just looked enraged and manic. I was like, bro, like, what is yeah. happening, my, my guy? Like, calm yourself. Like, it's yeah. a ball. Like, Someone that took was, his Doritos, yeah. Yeah, that was, Doritos. was a little disturbing yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know what causes that kind of reaction, but yeah, yeah he was not happy. And then we saw uh, a tweet from someone we know um, uh, talking about Giannis saying, you know, this guy plays like you talk about it's, it's one of his skills is that he just goes hard 100 percent of the time. Right. And because of that, he's often exhausted, like when he's on the floor and we talk about when you're exhausted, like, right. Mental things are much slower. You just and your reactions are where and I wonder if there's any kind of correlation in him playing so hard all the time that this is kind of how it bubbles and manifests sometimes. All right. So um, players are physical and some players are more physical than others. Uh, It is a a part of the deal of just trying to get under people's skin, bump them extra, that kind of thing. I may have said this on the show recently where I was talking to an NBA guard who was playing against a high level score and he just tried to bump them as much as he could. Like, Within the, I don't think it was called for a single foul doing it. All after the whistle, barely walking back. You know, a guy gets fouled, whoever it is, mm-hmm. you're walking out and you kind of, you know, you nudge him by mm-hmm. accident. Mm-hmm. But you're getting under the skin. I'm sure it happens in every sport, right? I, oh, we, I was watching, um, I might have been watching uh, uh, Hard Knocks. Mm. I've only seen one episode uh, because my brothers told me that the head coach for the Dolphins yeah. has a lot of similar things to how I coach whenever, mm-hmm. when I was coaching teams. I think it was that one, and uh, yeah, it's definitely what it was. Did we already talk about this. We, we talked about hard knocks, but not this particular. Yeah, but the, the defensive, the, the 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 some scout, some scout player for the <laughs> Dolphins was told by Tua, the quarterback, "Hey, dude, bump me all the time, like constantly shove me, bump me, hit me, because that's what whatever the mm-hmm. I don't know football anymore. Whatever is stud for the other team's defensive lineman, that's do. what he does." Mm-hmm. And every time he'd bump two under a week, two would be like, thank you. Great job. <laughs> Seriously, it was so awesome to see. And two would play great in the game. So this is part of it. Uh, if you don't like it, you probably have to play another sport. I, 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 my, my favorite all-time story is my son, when he was starting to play baseball, uh, most young players are afraid of the ball. Mm. And my son wasn't really afraid, but he also wasn't like, he was you know, nine years old, Gerard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, he, but so he, I, I, I think he had never been hit before. And I remember when I got hit when I was 13, I'm like, oh, this isn't fun. It was hit by a hard fastball. Sean Sukumeli, motherfucker, hit me twice. <laughs> but I did hit my first two, my only two homers ever were off Sean. I don't know if it was the same game or not, but one of them was, was the other one. I didn't like getting hit. So anyway, Masket, there was a guy, we had a pitcher named Spencer Alt. Uh, Spencer hit him in the head. Mm. And he was the fastest pitcher in the league. And he was like 11, Max was nine. And he ran to first base with a big fucking smile on his face. Thank God for the helmet, by the way. Of course. Thank goodness, thank goodness for the helmet. And so for after that point, they used to say it was dodgeball with Spencer. <laughs> Max, like, who cares? Like, I got hit on the head. I was fine. He was never afraid. And so this is part of it. So, and some guys can never get over that fear. If you're going to play against Giannis, he's going to play dodgeball with you. Deal with it. Right? You can complain to the referees. I have no problem with that. Mm-hmm. Let them police it. But just get used to it. Yeah, uh, I, I give Giannis credit. He made 24 of those 32 free throws. He sure did. It'd been better to make 28, 30. But like he wasn't stopping. No. Relentless, relentless, relentless. And I say to you, I've said this to you before. I always I categorize players two ways. There's guys that can dish out punishment, and there's guys that can take it and not let it affect their game. Iverson, foul him all you want. I'm going to the rim. I'm going to the rim. I'm not afraid of you. Giannis is one of those rare guys. It doesn't change the way he plays. 
and he's going to dish out a lot of physical punishment too. So is LeBron. Deal with it. Or play another sport. <laughs> and that's the definitive word from Coach Thorpe. Um, David, before we get to top five, one thing I didn't mention uh, at the top of the show when it was connected to this whole idea about you know the game's popularity, the Washington Wizards, um, Ted Leonsen, who owns the Monumental yeah. Sports Group, who owns the Capitals and the Wizards, um, they just got approval for uh, a new site to build a stadium in Alexandria, Virginia, which is not in downtown D.C., which is where Capital One Arena is right now. Um, and so the team will likely be, both teams will likely be moving uh, across the river to Virginia. And, you know, it, it's like the Warriors leaving Oakland and going to San Francisco and all these things happen. These teams come into these cities and these areas and they become a fabric of the community, right? And they leave and it's often like the damage that is done when they left, right? Like the fans who were coming and paying 15 bucks for this guess what? Income, you know, $15 seats in the new arena in Virginia, right? So you're not going to have any of that kind of local flavor and flair. And by the way, all the residents and, and, and businesses you displaced when you built the new arena in that city. Now, now the thing that was there to the team's not even in it anymore. And, and those people are, are still uh, displaced. And it's just, this is the reality of big, big business, which sports is. And it, it often hurts the people at the bottom and fans who actually care and want to be around. Well, I have been twice to their practice facility in Alexandria. I've stayed, actually, at a hotel right there. Um, do you know where they built their practice facility? Mm -mm. Uh, I don't know the name of the location, um, but it would be, at the very least, you would say it is um, very urban, mm. uh, uh, a lot of liquor stores, um, a lot of people on the streets all the time. When I was with the, I drove with players. They drove me, and they're not phased one bit. I, right. I, it was during the day. It seemed delightful. Uh, I thought it was cool as hell. Like th that's going to help this community. Th th this this area can only build out. I bet the arenas can be built close to that. I'm sure. First of all, it's probably cheaper. That was my first thought. I'm sure. I probably got land cheaper, and um, the security was fine. You had to go through a gate. We have to go through a gate everywhere. Right. But I, I was in three facilities in four days this summer, and they all had gates. Mm -hmm. Only one of them was built in a particular kind of community, which seemed surprising considering they could have picked a lot of places to build a very expensive mm -hmm. practice facility. I thought it was fantastic. That's going to just build out that community, hopefully. Hopefully not run them all out, by the way. Well, that, the that's... Go yeah. Up. yeah, that goes without saying. But I asked, more importantly to me, I asked the players, like, how do you feel? And they were like, they don't really care much right. either way. But um, it, they definitely recognize it's not what they were used to going to their practice facility in that uh, kind of environment. I mean, the, the Bulls had their practice center in a suburb mm -hmm. for years. Most teams do. Yep. I think it's cool. The Knicks, they're, they're different. in Westchester, their practice facility. Right, yep. right. Still still in Westchester. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So um, I, think, I think you're making a good point. And I think more teams who've got to build, I remember the Spurs just built this incredible I haven't seen it, but this incredible practice facility. That's a rat race, too. That's an arms race, right? And um, I think that the, I think more teams are going to do this. Of course. And they're going to look for cheap land. Yeah. And, you know, again, my, my concern is always, okay, you got the cheap land. What happens to the, the, the people and the businesses that you have to kick out and yeah. displace for that, right? Like, yeah. where do they go? Right. And then what happens later on when it starts being a cool spot? Right. And you start getting nice restaurants in and, and nice then it becomes cars. super expensive. And, uh, and right. And then where do those residents go? That, that's something to be followed. We'll, at Troop, we follow that stuff. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. All right, David. Top five time. Um, all right. Kick it off. You go first. Who's on the five line? I'm going with uh, a pretty hot team, the Milwaukee Bucks, after what happened last night. Mostly because of the way Giannis is playing. Yeah. He's just really, really playing at high level. He, is, he really is. I cheated. I put two teams on the five line because I can do that. Uh, yeah, sure. The Bucks and the Sixers. Ooh, I like Philly more than you. Uh, you do. <laughs> you love I Philly. Got, <laughs> I've got a mini number four. I got Nuggets number four. You know, I've been a little down on Denver. I yeah, don't have them on the top five. You have been. I I'm going to put them at five. With Milwaukee, if I wasn't cheating like you, and two teams at the time. If I was cheating, I don't mind that you did it. So, who's your four? Uh, Nuggets, those are my four. Denver, who's yeah. your three? So, three, I had OKC, my Same. first time getting there. Same for me. Okay, they're, three. They're, they're playing well, and uh, this is a regular season power rankings, mm -hmm. but they deserve their. Did I they? have the Sixers number two. Yeah, I got, I got the Wolves as two. Uh, I just, the record is what it is. Like, they it are, is, yeah. They're playing well, and then number one defense in the league. They're just, 
they lost to New Orleans the other day, and McDaniel came off the bench. That was confusing. To uh, me. Well, Alexander Walker. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ant, was Ant hurt in that game still? I, I don't mm. remember. I, I have the, these games are starting to roll run together now. I'm if like, he oh, was, crap. Then that's a good excuse to lose. No. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty special. He is. And then we both have Boston. Of course. That, listen, that starting five unit holy, <laughs> with, with Porzingis. And you still like, because he'd get. He'd come back right after the yeah. the tournament ended. Yeah. I was like, man, if if you only had to play five guys, I don't know how I pick up against anybody beating this team in best out of seven. If, if yeah. that was only the case, but it's not. So, you know, we'll see what happens later on in the season. All right, everybody, yeah. thanks for tuning in. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.